This is going to be the first of three videos about clotting. In this video we're mostly going to talk about platelets and try and understand how they work through some animations. But first of all we need to think about vessel vasoconstriction, which is the first thing that happens when a blood vessel is damaged. So our blood vessel gets damaged, it constricts and then that limits blood flow. This does two things, it prevents the amount of blood lost, but it also creates a really sluggish flow of blood which creates a much better environment for the platelets and coagulation factors to stick together and create a blood clot. So what happens next? In reality, there's lots of different processes happening at the same time. The blood vessels are constricting and at the same time the platelets are sticking together and also the coagulation cascade is occurring. So although these things are all happening at the same time, we usually talk about them separately. And we're going to talk about platelets first, the formation of a platelet plug. You can't really talk about platelets without talking about a von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor helps platelets to stick to the blood vessel wall, but it also helps them to stick together. It also carries factor 8, which is one of the factors found in the coagulation cascade. Von Willebrand factor is clearly really important in helping us form clots because we know that people who don't have enough of it, in other words, people who have von Willebrand's disease, can have very severe problems with bleeding. In fact, von Willebrand's disease is the most common hereditary cause of bleeding disorders. Now let's take a look at the structure of a platelet. You'll see platelets drawn in different ways, either an oval shape or an octopus with little legs. The important thing to know is that when platelets are activated, they change shape and increase their surface area. The surface of the platelet is covered with glycoproteins, which allow it to stick to things and also help to activate the platelet. A particularly important one is glycoprotein 2B3A, which is a horrid name to remember, but it's quite important for understanding how a platelet works, and it's also quite an interesting target for some of the new antiplatelet drugs. The platelet contains alpha granules and dense granules. These are small vesicles which contain chemical mediators. When these are released from the platelet, they can activate other platelets, drawing them in too to form the clot. We're going to take a closer look at how platelets actually work. Now we split this into three sections. There's platelet adhesion first, where the platelets are adhering to the vessel wall. The second stage is platelet activation, where they change shape and release their chemical mediators and create a chain reaction of platelet activation. In the last stage, platelet aggregation, the platelets are cross-linked by the fibrinogen, which polymerizes through way of the coagulation cascade to form a sticky fibrin mesh, which then contracts and forms a stable platelet plug. Let's start off at the adhesion stage. This is supposed to represent a blood vessel with blood flowing through the centre, surrounded by endothelial cells. The stuff that looks like dry spaghetti is supposed to be collagen in the connective tissue behind the endothelial cells. When a vessel injury occurs, the blood is exposed to stuff that it normally doesn't come into contact with, like collagen. At this stage, the von Willebrand factor binds onto the collagen and the platelets stick to either von Willebrand factor or they can bind straight onto the collagen. In the activation stage, the platelets have stuck to von Willebrand factor via their glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. This causes an intracellular signal to be sent which then activates the whole platelet. It changes shape to increase its surface area and begins to release its granules. The alpha granules contain more von Willebrand factor and fibrinogen. The fibrinogen will eventually become the sticky fibrin mesh via the coagulation cascade. Dense granules contain ADP and thromboxane both of which help to activate other platelets and they also cause more vasoconstriction. Finally, in the aggregation stage, fibrinogen is converted to fibrin by the coagulation cascade. The fibrin polymerizes and turns into a sticky mesh. Platelets bind onto the fibrin and their cell skeleton will again change shape, pulling everything in and creating a really dense and stable clot. Again, we're coming back to our glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, which 
as well as binding von Willebrand factor, also binds onto fibrinogen. And it's this binding to fibrinogen, which later becomes a fibrin mesh, that's really important for making that final, stable platelet plug. So now we have an understanding of how platelets work, we can look at the drugs we can use to manipulate how platelets work. First of all, aspirin. If you've previously looked at how non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or paracetamol work, you might be familiar with this simplified pathway. A substance called arachidonic acid is processed by a number of enzymes to become important chemical mediators, including thromboxane, prostaglandin, and prostacyclin. Thromboxane is the one that we're really interested in, and you might remember it's one of the components of the dense granules that help with platelet activation. Aspirin irreversibly binds the cyclooxygenase, known as COX enzyme, and reduces the amount of thromboxane around, which will then reduce the amount of platelet activation happening. The next drug we're going to look at is clopidogrel. If you remember, we also said that a substance called ADP was released from the dense granules. ADP binds onto receptors which activate the platelet. Clopidogrel simply blocks this receptor so the platelet can't be activated by the ADP. The next group of drugs you possibly haven't heard of because they're quite new, and in the UK at least, they're only used in a few different situations. They're not used very commonly at all. They're also very expensive. They include tyrofibam and the monoclonal antibody AB6IMAB. All of these drugs inhibit the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, which we've talked about extensively now, and that's the one that binds onto fibrinogen and von Willebrand factor. So, aspirin inhibits the cyclooxygenase enzyme in quite a similar way to how paracetamol or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs do. Clopidogrel works by inhibiting the ADP receptor on platelets. There are also some new drugs like tyrofibam and AB6IMAB, and they work by inhibiting the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. Hopefully you can join us in the next video when we'll try and clear up some of the confusion with the coagulation cascade.